the bombs dropped, or the reactor melted, or some intern pressed the wrong button. Doesn't matter. What matters is the air tastes like metal, and that weird rash on your arm might be evolving into a third elbow. The cities are silent, food is scarce, and you? You're somewhere in between hiding and accepting your fate as a future mutant. You need answers. Good. We're learning nuclear survival science, the gritty duct tape and desperation kind. Because if you're going to die, at least die educated. First, let's talk about what's trying to kill you. Radiation. It's invisible, tasteless, and it's spewing out in three flavors. Alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha particles are chunky, stopped by your skin or a piece of paper. Cute! Unless you breathe them in, then they shred your insides like a blender. Beta particles are meaner. They'll burn through skin, but a thick jacket or aluminum foil can stop them. Yes, the foil from your leftover pizza is now life-saving armor. Then there are gamma rays, the snipers. They pass through your body, walls, your false sense of security. You need lead, thick concrete, or several feet of earth to even slow them down. And all three ride on the fallout, radioactive dust that settles on everything. You breathe it, you eat it, and congratulations, your DNA starts unraveling like a cheap sweater. So you adapt. You science your way out of becoming a statistic. Your first move, shelter. The first rule of nuclear survival is get inside and stay inside. Fallout is heaviest in the first 48 hours. After two weeks, radiation levels drop by about 99%. That's your window. Find a brick or concrete building. Basements are gold. Middle floors of apartment buildings are solid. Top floors, you're basically sunbathing in gamma rays. Don't do it. No basement, make one. Pile dirt, books, furniture, anything dense against the walls. Radiation weakens with distance and mass. A foot of packed earth cuts exposure significantly. You're building a gross, claustrophobic, life-saving cave. Then seal the gaps. Duct tape, plastic sheeting, wet towels. Fallout dust is the real killer. Keep it out. And for the love of physics, don't go outside to check if it's safe. It's not. Stay inside. Okay, you're in your cave. Now you're thirsty. Every water source is suspect. Rivers, lakes, tap water, all of it could be liquid death. Your savior is distillation. See, radiation contaminates water with particles, but steam doesn't carry particles. When water evaporates, it leaves the bad stuff behind. Pure H2O rises. So here's how you make it happen with trash and fire. Find a large metal pot. Fill it with contaminated water. Place a smaller container, like a tin can, inside the pot so it floats or sits above the bottom. This is your collection cup. Cover the big pot with a lid, upside down. The curve will funnel condensation. If you can, put something cold on top of the lid to speed it up. Now, heat the pot. The water boils, steam rises, hits the cold lid, condenses, and drips pure, clean water into your collection can. You just made drinkable water from a radioactive puddle. You're alive. That's what counts. You've got water, but you need calories. Welcome to the radioactive buffet. Canned food is king. If the can is intact, the food inside is safe. Radiation doesn't penetrate metal. Just wipe the can down before you open it. Same goes for sealed packaged food. Clean the outside and you're good. Fresh food is a gamble. If it was outside, it's contaminated. But you can reduce the risk. Peel fruits and vegetables. The outer layer absorbs most of the fallout. Toss it. Eat the inside. Meat? Avoid wild game. Animals concentrate radiation in their organs. If you must, stick to muscle tissue and cook it thoroughly. Heat doesn't kill radiation, but it does kill bacteria. And if you find a stash of pre-war junk food, eat it. Calories are calories. Your body needs fuel to repair cellular damage. Malnutrition makes radiation sickness worse. So yes, that Twinkie might actually save your life. It's not about thriving. It's about making it through the first two weeks. Because the science you learn now determines if you get to fight another day. Stay smart. Stay alive. You have to go outside. Scavenging, relocating, maybe just to escape the cabin fever. Whatever the reason, you need protection. Think of it as DIY hazmat cosplay. 
cover every single inch of skin. Long sleeves, pants, gloves, boots. Now, grab the duct tape. Seal the gaps at your wrists, ankles, and neck. Fallout particles on your skin cause burns. Keep them off. Mask up. A respirator is ideal. Don't have one? Use a cloth mask, a bandana, a t-shirt. Wet it. Moisture traps the dust you absolutely cannot breathe in. Your lungs don't have an undo button. Goggles, swim goggles, safety glasses, even sunglasses are better than nothing. Protect your eyes. Now, an outer layer, a trash bag or a plastic tarp worn like a poncho. It's a disposable shield between you and the dust. When you get back, you strip it off outside the shelter. Leave the contamination at the door. This decontamination ritual is non-negotiable. Before you go back inside, outer layers off. Wipe down any exposed skin with a damp cloth. You're not sterilizing, you're removing the tiny radioactive particles that will kill you from the inside out. Got none of this? Your only protection is speed. Move fast, get in, get out. Time is your life. So how do you detect the invisible killer? A Geiger counter is a luxury. You improvise. First, use your eyes. Fallout is visible. It's a fine grayish dust settled on cars, on rooftops, on the ground. You see it? That's your red flag. Do not touch it. Don't breathe near it. Second, check the wind. Fallout drifts. Know where the blast was? Stay upwind. Watch how smoke moves, how dust blows. That's the invisible river of death. Third, watch for what's missing, the animals. Birds dropping from the sky, no insects. Nature is your early warning system. If they're dying, you're next. And the final sensor, your own body. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea within hours of being outside, that's not the flu, that's acute radiation sickness. You've taken a serious dose. There's no cure out here, but knowing helps you make the next call. Do you push on or hunker down? It's a grim calculation, but one you have to make. Survive the fallout and you enter the next phase, the slow burn. Radiation doesn't just kill you fast. It gets you with cancer, organ failure, years down the line. So how do you fight a ghost? If you find potassium iodide tablets, you take them immediately. They flood your thyroid with safe iodine, blocking the radioactive kind from getting in. It only protects your thyroid, but that's a major victory. Next, antioxidants. Radiation creates chaos in your cells. Antioxidants are the cleanup crew. Vitamin C, vitamin E, fine supplements, take them. Find berries or nuts, prioritize them. And stay clean. This isn't comfort, it's survival. Contaminated clothes are a constant source of radiation. Wash when you can, keep your shelter clean. Every particle you remove is a small win. And maybe most important, find other people. Radiation is a solo killer, but survival is a team sport. Pool knowledge, share supplies. Don't be a hero, be smart. So why does any of this work? It's not magic, it's physics. Shielding works because mass, concrete, dirt, anything thick absorbs energy. Decontamination works because you're physically removing the radioactive particles. It isn't contagious, it's just everywhere. But here's the kicker, none of this guarantees survival. You can do everything right and still lose. Radiation is a dice roll with loaded odds, but doing something is infinitely better than doing nothing. Knowledge is the difference between dying in three days and dying in three decades. And in the apocalypse, that's a win. The world ended. You didn't. That's either a miracle or a curse, depending on the day. But you're here. And as long as you're breathing, you have one job. Stay alive. Radiation is just another problem to solve. Like hunger. Like thirst. You adapt. You scavenge. You science your way through the chaos.